this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving punishment. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. But my love will never be taken away from him. Fun. Short. Hard worker. Loving. Father. Twin love. Um, father, father, authority figure. Uh, my own father and the relationship I yeah, wish I had I'm gonna stop. when I was a kid. I think of uh, fun childhood things, sunny days, and uh, fishing trips. It is interesting to note here that in explaining which father he is praying to, Paul enlightens them as well as to the depth of their indebtedness to that father. The Ephesians, who are probably a largely Gentile congregation, would have seen Paul's explanation of as a reminder of the fact that the nations on earth, not just the Jewish nations, received even their names from the father. Further, Paul reminds them of the power of that father which will become the basis for some of the argument that follows.